an out and out still water lure. It's got several additional elements. It's got bright pink chain bead eyes. A Kahena's trigger, fantastic. But I've also got some wonderful stuff. That's a chain bead eyes, bright, lovely pink things. I've also got this Franz, which is kind of like a, a straggle hackle with per lesson, little bits of flash coming off it. So you've got a little bit of color and lots of punch, lots of movement. I've got that in two colors here. I've got the sunburst one in a hot pink. Sorry, flu orange and hot pink. I've also got some really bright sunburst marabou for the tail. And finally, I've got this old bright dub. Uh, any pink dubbing will do. Just something that you can brush out. We want to put that in and comb it over the body. But this rhubarb and custard lure is very good in small still waters, especially for rainbows. Just as you're going from sort of April through into May and even until June. Nice clear water's what you're after. In the vice here, this is a very large, thick, size eight lure hook. Um, wet fly, size eight. This one just happens to be a, a mustard hook, I think. Yeah, mustard R90. So, I'm coming in, I'm using a, a white thread, white vivas thread here. Good thing with this thread is it'll take a, a pen die quite easy. And building up, <clears throat> just a little bit of thread behind the eye. That's my base, so I can lock in my fluorescent chain bead eyes. So once you've locked them in, they'll turn. Make sure they're straight. You can do this with thread wraps. And then once they're straight, figure of eight thread wraps. Round, 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 figure of eight, figure of eight, figure of eight, locked in place, nice and tight, like so. Now if you can, you can add a drop of super glue to that. I would, but for the purposes of this tying, you've got them straight now, they're locked in place. Wind the thread down, creating a base, stopping at the end of the bend. Wind back up and open turns so you're no wasting thread. And then in with the sunburst. I'm wanting quite a long plume. And a lot of it. So I've got about an inch off the stalk there. Spin it, bind the fibres. What I like to do is take off the stub ends, come in right behind the eyes, and lock in place like so. Run your fingers down, keeping everything nice and even. We create that even body. There's no bulk, there's no lumpy bits. It's spot on, like so. Nice long tail, lots and lots of movement. Now I've got to use a small section of this fronds. There's a pre-cut bit, that's good. Come in and secure it. What I'm looking for is a body of half and half. Half flow yellow and half pink. The thing when you're tying a, a, a fritz or a straggle or anything like that is when you wind, always stroke the fibres back so they're going the same way. Always stroke them back. Every time you take a wrap, stroke the fibres towards the rear of the hook. It'll splay everything out and hopefully keep everything going the same way. One more wrap. So, keep it like that, keep your thumb on it, and then just lock in place before coming in with your scissors and trimming. So there we are, we're halfway up the body on that one. Now a little bit of the hot pink. And the same again. Secure on your side of the hook shank. Any stray fibres that are poking above the eyes or in front, just stroke them back and lock them in with, with thread wraps. Everything nice, neat and tidy. <whistles> like so. Leave yourself a little bit, just a, just a little touch at the head. Again with the previous ones, just stroke your fibres back. 
and live here up. It seems fiddly, but it's worth it. Everything tends to be going the right way rather than the wrong way. And it makes a difference to how the fly fishes. Again, cut your thumb, secure. Tidy everything up now. Pull all the fibres that are above the eyes and towards the eye, the hook, back. And secure in place like that. There's one stray one. To be fair, you could actually trim those off. Anyway, that's looking spot on. A little bit of the bright dub dubbing now. It's kind of the same colour as the eyes. What I'm looking to do is get a, a kind of loose, bit thin rope. Easier said than done with this stuff because it's not the most adherent of dubbing materials. Go once round the eyes at the back. Get a tight rope. There you go, that's just a flint of bits already. And then I'm going to figure of eight it around the eyes. Figure of eight around the eyes. Like that. And then just pull it up, hit the stubs ends away, and we'll secure at the front of the hook. If you wet your fingers, the, the, the fibres will adhere to your fingers and then you can just come in and lock everything down like so. Wet finish, as close as you do it. Add a little drop of varnish there if you wish. What you can do is, I've not got it here, but I use a pink pen, I just dab that white with a pink pen. But to be fair, to be fair, you don't really need it. Now, <clears throat> just to finish the fly off, is come in with a little bit of Velcro and stroke some of the dub right in. Look at that. Blend it in. Looking lovely there. To the fronds. So there you go, just stroke those fibres back. This is a wonderful lure for small waters. We've got the the lovely pink bead chain eyes, they're giving it a little bit of weight, undulous movement as it moves through the water. Lots of flash, lots of movement here in the fronds as well. But we've also got that wonderful, sinuous, long sunburst marabou tail. Try it, you won't be disappointed. The way to fish this is, your best bet's are a floating line, a long leader, or perhaps an intermediate to keep it on that level plane. It'll work fantastically well. Um, so yeah, the last one of our six flies for catching trout early in the season in still waters. I hope you enjoyed this fly fishing DVD. I enjoyed making it with some really nice flies. Um, obviously these things can be manipulated to suit you and your water. For instance, the dry fly, the little shuttlecock CDC, change the colours and it'll match the hatch perfectly. So we've covered everything from nymphs to boobies to big scary lures like the rhubarb and custard. Some fantastic flies. Very easy to tie. That's what this DVD is all about at the end of the day. They're easy flies to tie. Hopefully you'll have great success with them. I'm sure you will. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again soon on the next fly tying DVD from Total Fly Fishing Magazine.